uh, towards <laughs> I forgot to turn my light on. What's happening, Booth Junkies? Mike Delgadio here, back with another video about home voiceover and home studio recording. And today we're going to talk about breathing in the booth. Um, I think a lot of people, when they get started in voiceover, they really become conscious about the way their breath sounds, and they may get coaching or they may read online that you got to really edit out all of your breaths and people should never hear you breathe. And I would kind of say that's probably really not entirely true. In the beginning, there is a, a tendency for new voice actors to develop some bad habits uh, in front of the microphone that I think lead to the misconception that you need to edit out your breaths. And the first thing is, a lot of times when, when I've seen new voice actors working, guilty of it myself, that's for sure, that they tend to take a pause and then a dramatic, what I call a slash breath. I'm not sure how I came by that term. I forget where I got that term from. Uh, but a slash breath where you go, despite that blah, 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 and you start to say your sentence, and you, and you say that you put these, these big slash breaths in like uh, you're for a dramatic effect. And those sound, actually, they sound pretty bad on, uh, in your recording. The thing that you uh, do need to work on is managing your breath. Not only you're breathing from like a singing perspective, making for sure that you breathe from your diaphragm and you take good, comfortable breaths so that you don't run out of breath, but also you need to learn to breathe sort of with an open mouth and, a, and an open windpipe so that your voice is, so that you, so that your, um, your inhales sound natural. It really shouldn't sound like much just with your natural breathing. It's okay if there's a little bit of sound. But it shouldn't sound like a slash every time you're taking in your breath. You're not singing. You're not belting. You're just talking. And really, that's what you should be doing. Just talking. The other thing that I see people uh, mention is my mouth gets so full of saliva when, I, when I'm recording. And it's like they're afraid to swallow or there's some sort of nervousness in front of the microphone that tends to lead to a lot of saliva. And I think I was probably guilty of this in the beginning uh, when I was when I was recording is I would try and take these really enormous, unnaturally deep breaths so that I could get through a whole long paragraph in one breath. And it's uh, it's something that you learn how to do over time is to to naturally control the way your inhale sounds and also so that you can learn to take these little micro inhales along the way so that if you are. If you're trying to get through a long text, a long sentence, you can find little places to breathe in the middle of the sentence so that you can really talk for a long time without having these really long, dramatic pauses as you take in another breath. You can, you can start to learn these little tiny places that you, can, that you can take in a breath. And sometimes that happens through a couple of different rehearsals. As, as you get comfortable working through a script, you'll find the natural places that a pause can occur. And those aren't necessarily where a comma is. There's nothing that says uh, that you have to follow the punctuation exactly. I often find that a script that when it's written... Uh, the commas make place from a grammatical perspective, but they don't necessarily make sense from a natural speaking cadence. So you can tie things together. You can move around where those pauses and where those breaths are in order to satisfy the performance, but also to satisfy your lungs to make sure that you're actually inhaling in a way that's that leads to natural conversation. You notice that when I'm breathing here, it's sometimes it's in between a sentence, sometimes it's where a comma would be, but otherwise it's just where I need to take a breath so that I don't run out of breath. That's really the thing that you want to try and do is is always take in more breath before you're desperate for it. Like you know, you, they they say from a health perspective. If you're thirsty, you're dehydrated. Well, if you feel like you're out of breath, you should have taken an inhale a long time ago. And that's all there is to it. Just speak at a natural, comfortable speaking cadence and take a breath when it's needed. Don't worry about swallowing 
You can always swallow when you talk, and you can edit out the swallowing noises. I swallow a lot when I'm in the booth, and you know sometimes you can hear it, especially if your mouth is dry. You can hear those, and you can edit those out. But as you learn your breathing technique and you learn to breathe with an open mouth, with an open windpipe, you'll find that the breaths really aren't that loud. Now, I know you've actually been listening to my breath really closely and you're really paying attention to how does it sound. And the thing is, I don't actually hear the way my breath is. And under normal circumstances, you wouldn't even notice it either. Breathing is something we all do. You hear breath with every sentence you speak, with every sentence you ever hear anybody speak. So they're, they're, they're naturally there. If, you're, if your breaths are loud... One thing that you can do is you can use your noise gate to help duck down in between. You just need to set your threshold above where the sound of that breath is. And it also helps if you come up with a couple of uh, keystrokes. In Reaper, I use some saved actions that help me um, change a breath. There'll be Normally, I keep it so that the, the noise gate is slightly above where my natural inhale is. So the noise gate will duck them down just sort of as a byproduct of the gate. Uh, but there will be some times when I'm speaking an energetic part or a particularly emotional part during a, uh, during a long form where I do end up with a, a breath that is slightly above, where, uh, slightly above the threshold. And you'll hear the gate click in and click off during that, during that section, uh, during that breath. And I have a couple of uh, saved actions, some keystrokes that allow me very quickly to just highlight that breath and either turn it up or turn it down just so I can move it above or below the threshold. Um, and those are, those are techniques that um, I can show you. So I realized as I was sitting here editing this video that I never actually showed you in Reaper what those actions were that I was talking about. Uh, and we didn't actually look at the gate, even though I said, I'd show you. So here I am doing this after the fact. And we're going to do this like meta, because I'm going to do it with the video that you're watching that I'm editing. So let's actually see how it works, because you've been listening to me breathe here. So uh, first, what we have here looking at the screen, we have the audio track. The video tracks are minimized, but I've got the audio track. And you can actually sort of see where my individual breaths are, right? So if we listen... True. In the beginning... Okay, so there's a good one. So the first thing I'll show you is normally if you have a gate applied to manage your room noise, you may be sort of de-breathing and minimizing your breath to begin with. So I'll put on my normal FX chain and that is to apply, uh, it's got a gate and my de and my compressor and all that stuff. That's my normal uh, chain. And well, it should actually duck down a lot of those breaths. So let's go back and listen. True. In the beginning, there is a, a tendency for... So a couple of those breaths were uh, above. And so let's say, for example, this breath right here that I wanted to take that breath out because it was distracting or whatever, or um, it was being triggered by the gate. So let's change the threshold on the gate here. That will make it so that the, that I, that I think, that I, okay. So when we're, when we're looking at the, uh, the threshold, we can adjust where that threshold triggers and so by raising the threshold slightly above the volume of the breath, you'll see that it ducks the breath way down. That I, that I, so right here, this is the breath. So we'll listen to it and we should hear the breath is ducked down way the microphone that, and that's because I've got the dry. Remember the wet and dry we've talked about in other videos. Uh, the dry is the signal before the gate is applied and the wet is after the gate is applied, the before a process and after a process. So I have the gate, I normally have my gate uh, bring the, the a little bit of the dry back in. So it just sounds quieter. The microphone that I, and we see that that breath gets put way down. And that's because it's, that sound is lower than the threat of the microphone that, but let's say the microphone that I'm trying to get it, the microphone that, so 
now I've got the threshold adjusted so that only part of the breath is above the threshold. So if you listen more closely, you'll hear the, the gate click on halfway through the breath. And I'll take the dry out so it's more pronounced. The microphone that the microphone that the microphone that I you can hear that click in the middle and that is super distracting. Uh, so what what you can do and what I have done is I make it so that when I'm on when I have my uh, audio track selected I have some keys mapped so I can say let's see if I can make this uh, appear so I have the minus and plus keys mapped so if I hit minus it automatically takes that time selection and ducks it down so now you see it's lowered the volume just at that specific breath so now one of the microphone that I think now it's essentially completely removed and I can hit the plus to bring some of it back in one of the microphone that I and now I've got it below the threshold of the gate so I don't get that click anymore one of the microphone that but the breath is still a little tiny bit there so I can one of the microphone that I think now it's too loud the gate is triggering one of the microphone that I think and now it's below the threshold of the gate and I've done that just by creating an action so in the actions list I have and I'm doing this on the fly here uh, but I have it mapped to plus and minus so in the actions list let's edit what that action is and you'll see it selects the envelope for pre-volume FX. It inserts four envelope points. So that's what these four dots are. It makes four points, two ins and two outs. And then it moves the selected points down a little bit. So it takes those two middle points that are the selected ones because they're solid instead of the hollow ones that are unselected. It takes the two selected ones and it moves it down. I have it moved down a little bit three times. And so that's what one click is. It will move it down three increments, whatever that increment is. And so I have that mapped to the minus key. Now I have another one mapped to the plus key. Let's see if we can find. Oh, <laughs> I know what I've done wrong. It's I didn't want to have to hit shift. So the mnemonic is the plus key, but it's actually the equals. I have it mapped to uh, minus and equals because I don't want to have to hit shift for plus. Uh, so it was uh, increase the pre FX volume. And so let's take a look at that one. Increase the pre FX volume. Let's just edit that. And you'll see it's just the same thing. It's the uh, pre FX volume envelope, insert port, uh, two envelope points, and I have it moving up a little bit twice. The increases tend to be more dramatic, so I only have it going a little bit, uh, but that's the way. I have it working. And so now whenever I make a selection, I can highlight a, a selection. Is that a really loud one right there? Oh yeah, look at that. So let's imagine that breath, we wanted to get rid of it and just moderate that. I can now just highlight a section and hit the minus key and it will disappear. See, so it's much quieter. Now. Still above the gate. But it's much quieter or I can make it super loud <laughs> but uh, typically for this uh, I usually have the gate manage it and I only have to do that a couple of three times during a, a performance when, a, when my breath is just slightly above or below I try and keep the breaths in and quieter with the gate because they do sound natural uh, but I can adjust them that way with those actions that's a really super quick way to do it um, that's it now back to the video uh, so those are the that's the the basics of what I have for you today is learn to breathe quietly it shouldn't sound like much learn to breathe naturally and don't get wound around the axle about when you're supposed to breathe or when you're not supposed to breathe and just make this microphone like it's another person. Because it's a microphone doesn't mean that you have to make it this precious thing. This is just a tool to pick up your voice. If they could hear it without this microphone being in your face, that's actually the ideal, right? This is just here to listen to me. 
I'm not performing for it. I'm not doing anything special for it. It's just listening to me so that you can hear it. I don't have to do anything special. So that's the advice I have for you today. Think about your breathing, but think about your breathing as don't think about it. Does that make sense? My coach would always tell me when I was when I was learning how to record, she'd say, now listen to all my notes and then forget them. And that's really what I'm telling you is, is the note is don't actually think about your breathing until you really need to think about it. You don't, under most circumstances, just breathe, just deliver. It's only when you're getting to the point where you, you need to hit something within 15 seconds, where you need to hit some, you know, more text than you can fit in 30 seconds, within 30 seconds. That's when you're going to sort of ramp yourself up with a great big breath beforehand and blast through your entire script without ever taking a breath so that you never ever hear the inhale because you never really have time for that inhale because you got to really get through the whole script in 30 seconds without ever taking a breath, without ever inhaling. That's when you really need to work on your inhale in advance. But that's all going to get edited out before you ever do anything. And that's when you can inhale. So you can do those long things and you can practice with those deep, those deep inhales. But under normal circumstances with long form narration, magazine articles, audiobooks, things like that. Just breathe. I hope this helps. Now, go get in your booth and breathe, but record something amazing.